Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bravo stream for CCL tonight. My name is Keg, and I'm joined by the amazing Mr. Mick. How are you doing, dude? Hey, dude, I'm, I'm feeling all right. You know, got to squeeze in a little exam, as you guys know, on the production side. And to oh, yeah. Make the best grade, but, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll buff. I mean, I don't know where you're from, but A is usually the best grade where, where, you know, for school for me. But, yeah. You know, A plus yeah. too. I'm proud of your A plus. <laughs> no, but we do, have two, <laughs> we do have two amazing teams, though. We have CSU LB Black versus Gross Mod College. This is going to be a really interesting matchup here. It's going to be two really good teams, and I think CSU is kind of on a streak right now, too. <laughs> a little of a streak. <laughs> These boys are 9-0 and o right now. They're on a real good ends? streak. They, that's enough. They, they've got an artillery strike in terms of records right now. <laughs> but does it end here? That's a good question. That's what we're looking forward to see. I mean, Grosmont's also a very good college as well. They're not necessarily on a nine streak, but even then, they're still a really good team. This is going to be one heck of a matchup for the Bravo stream here, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. Yeah, overall, when you look at, uh, you know, Long Beach against Grossmont. Overall, Grossmont is sitting at 8-1 right now, while Long Beach Black is sitting at 9-0. and So, I mean, there's not that too much of a difference in terms of skill discrepancy here. I mean, they're pretty fairly matched. I mean, last week, Grossmont did lose to ASU Gold. We, I'm being kind of flustered about that myself, but overall, I mean, I feel like this just gives them a kind of revenge to what they're looking for right now, when these guys are trying to find a way to, you know, shut Long Beach down to show that even if we can sit there and lose a game, I mean, we're going to get to this matchup anyway. So, I mean, one of us are going to get a loss somewhere down the line. So if I can get this over with, if we can get these guys, you know, knocked out and into an eight and one or get us to a nine and one spot and them as well, then we're going to be sitting peachy for the rest of the time. It's going to be a battle of two Titans, Mick. Only one's going to come out on top here, but the first map that we're going to see is Hardpoint with Raid. Now, we have seen Control last time we were casting here, and it was a decent matchup between the two teams, but this time around, I mean, these are two juggernauts. They have to play aggressive. They have to find those early points. Yeah, and I completely agree with you, And because not even just in terms of a single match or a single game at that point, you have to also look at the series as a whole, because, I mean, both games tonight have been 3-0 sweeps, but hopefully, looking at how these two teams perform overall, we could be possibly looking at a map 5. I mean, not, not just a map 4, but a map 5, if things line up correctly for us, because, I mean, we love seeing good games overall, and I think this has the potential to, you know, carry out to that point compared to the rest of these matches so far. Do you think it's going to happen? Do you think we're going to hit map five? Hey, fingers crossed, man. I, I love to have some more COD to cast over, especially this being the final game of the night on this channel. You know, I would love to sit there and see that play out. And I would love to sit there and have a good old time, you know, until until the sun rises talking about this game and how well these players can play. <laughs> I mean, at this time of night, almost literally. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, well, let's only give you a few more minutes until we get everything set up here. But Raid has been a really cool and really introductory map for a lot of teams when it comes to both the control and when it comes to hard point side. It's going to be those early points, like we mentioned, that are going to be hotly contested. The defense usually has a little bit more of a leeway there. But, Mick, I'm really curious what you think. Do you think the offense is going to have a slight advantage or is it going to go to the defense? I think overall, it really comes down to this first point. With you see how critical it is to be right there on those rocks in that courtyard on laundry, I think it's going to be come down to upper art and upper laundry, figure out how those two can fight each other, get some kind of control onto that site, and find a way to go ahead and establish themselves straight up. Because with how large this map is, you're really, I mean, rotations are way too easy to shut off because of the fact that if you're running so far away and you get clipped off by any kind of chance, I mean, this that's way longer of a time that you're going to be traversing around compared to, you know, the likes of somewhere like Garrison or Crossroads at that point. Ooh, but speaking of chance, going back and forth, CSU LB are able to find the early advantage here. Two bodies on the point already. We did see some on Gross, but they bet they fall almost immediately. Sure, it's only 10 points now, but not a single has gone to the favor of Gross, but CSU is able to take this away now, and not even a single member of the Turquoise team has come even close. 
Yeah, and we do see these guys right now already trying to establish themselves up front when it comes to this next point. Because overall, I mean, when it comes to P2, that's also a huge determining factor. And we already see them rotating and trying to set up for it as best as possible. Because around this kitchen, it does give the guys who spawn over here towards court an advantage. Because they do already have to hold those spawns if you don't get a man flanking around for it. And I mean, they have to lock this down. And in case right now, it looks like Grossmont's probably going to have the upper hand when it comes to locking this down. And you mentioned it yourself, that first point's going to be critical, and it was almost entirely flawlessly in the favor of CSU, but now we're starting to see some points on the board for Grossman's side. Early flanks coming on through, Dazum's able to contest one inside the window, able to find it, but no, almost a double kill at that, beautiful, but not able to make it a shriek, able to hold down that control. A lot in the favor of Grosma. He's going to make his way entry forwards. If he can take down Kinger, this will be a full control for CSU yet again. He's almost able to do it, but the trade goes through anyways. Now... Not as bad as it was before. 18 to 33, still a deficit for Grosman's side, but now they're finding a lot more control on P2, but you're gonna have to start worrying about P3 momentarily. Yeah, especially with there being so little time on this point. Around with how large this map is, you are gonna be looking at about the 20 second mark where these guys are gonna be looking for those rotations. We already see Long Beach trying to make their way over there, but they're gonna be running into a couple Grossmont players in the way. Had to run into a little couple hurdles, but Afro's gonna lock that down alongside Bolt. They're gonna try and make a push right here because Grossmont's already gaining points on this next on this next area they're already established on it they already have a couple guys set up for it and as long as they don't get these spawns lost they're looking really good oh but let's see what happens next rcbz has a prime position they're able to find the ankles of two different bodies at once no make that possibly three afro's playing it calm though calm cool and collected still gonna take a grenade able to be traded out though grosma takes control of the site yet again p3 now Dominantly in the favor of the turquoise side. They've been able to make this work. This is the most dominant they've been so far. CSU haven't been able to get a single point on P3 as of yet. Trophy systems go down. Overextension a little bit there. They will still find the bodies on CSU's side. This is looking really good though. And only 18 away for a potential comeback. The CSU are able to sneak their way in a little bit more. Throw bodies at the scene. And even though RCVZ is able to find a five streak, he's going to fall. Yeah, that's really disappointing, especially when you're breaking down these hard points. Those streaks are really going to help you clear out these sites and find a way to get an advantage overall, especially when it comes to this next one on basketball court with it being so open, so out in the area. I mean, if you can sit there, even if those streaks don't go down and get any of these guys overall, if they're locked up inside that little locker room right there, that's a huge easy way for these guys to infiltrate the teammates that aren't exactly controlling the streaks. An easy little infill for them to go ahead and flood the point and find a way to get on top. Oh, and Nick, the rotates from CSU have been looking so good. It's been dominantly in their favor for the majority of this game. And RCVZ has been the anchor that Grossmont needs. But we just need a few more RCVZs on their team. Look now, though. Trades galore inside the kitchen. Can Dazem find the ring around the rosy ashes, ashes, though? They all fall down inside, though. It's going to be dominantly in the favor again. The kill feed going white to green as it goes through. But now approaching triple digits. It's going to be in the favor of CSU yet again. Grossmont falls behind. They were so close on P2. Yeah, and you know, these guys are... It really was a close game up front, but I mean, overall, when you're starting at a 0-0 lineup, I mean, you don't exactly have too much of a lead anywhere to work with besides that first point. So, you know, right now, these guys overall, the guys on Long Beach are really just showing that they are here to, you know, shut these guys on Grossmont down. Having such a strong start and raid, I think it's also because of the familiar, uh, familiarity of the map. These guys are pretty used to this map overall. They've shown that they can win it time and time again. And besides that, they can win any kind of game or mode, you know, depending on the map or whatever, again and again, because of how well they're doing so far. And especially when you look at that kill feed, I mean, they're just showing the same thing, getting those kills again and again, not letting, you know, Gross might get any kind of opportunity to get on these points. Yeah, CSU is running away with this win now. It was a little rocky in P2 and 3, but at this point now, back to P1. I'm sorry, no, P5. This is looking dominantly in their favor. It's very, very not often we're seeing Grosmont find these kills, and then again, they get almost immediately traded out. They are able to almost approach their way towards the middle of the courtyard, but no, not even close, it seems at times. They're surrounding the main area. They're buffering themselves out a little bit more. Opportunities like Lama able to approach up, maybe find some kills, but no, they're able to stay alive and get traded out instead. Bodies falling everywhere, though. More dominantly in the favor of CSU yet again. Gameplay is slowing down a little bit more, though, Mick. Look at this, though. Back to P1. Early rotates coming on through. But look at where we see Grossmont. They're not even close. They're trying to play a defensive game. Yeah, and we do see them actually trying to hold up 
on the defensive side, which is kind of odd because when you're in the situation of being down a, a little over 100 points now, you want to be trying to find a way to get these rotations. Even if you know you can't hold down a point, hey, give it to this enemy team at that point. Give them that whole 40 seconds because I know it sounds stupid, but I mean, when you're looking forward, you need to get those rotations. You need to set up around the map and be in a situation where you can catch these guys off guard, screw up their spawns, and then overall giving yourself plenty of free time to, you know, kind of allocate yourself and get yourself kind of really established on that next point. But it's not looking like at this point they have that option with you know, like California at 205 now. Oh, this is one of the biggest runaways I think we've casted so far, Mick. This is huge for CSU. Grossmont, though, it's not too late. They have to find their footing again, but these rotates are almost never in their favor. They're able to find a very early success, but they only get one point out of it, and CSU immediately trade out. Look at Flamma, though, holding the bottom of the stairs. That was able to find so much work with it now, but gets traded out, but the trades are the name of the game. Grossmont aren't able to find these streaks like CSU's been able to. Bolt on the screen, 23 and 10, already on a three for, but Grossmont doesn't have a single one. It's not too late, though. Like we mentioned, they have to find those rotates. Yeah, and this really what it comes down to at this point, because I mean, when you're sitting in kitchen, these guys, they have 20, they have more than enough time to actually close out right here. Whoa. And if you're in the shoes of Grossmont, you have to just contest, which I mean, they're trying their best to do, but they're just kind of funneling it in, letting them get those kills. And it's not even looking like they'll have enough time to clear it out right here. Four, three, two, one, and that's game number one. CSU in a dominant fashion, finding hard point pretty much through every single point we had seen, Mick. And really only P2 or 3 that we had seen, especially here with RCVZ. That was the only time we saw Garazmont really in the game. Yeah, I mean, overall, I just, I don't know if this may be Garazmont's map or not, because, I mean, these guys have been performing really well overall, but, I mean, it just, it's kind of disappointing to see how they performed this time around, because you see that they've had such an impressive showing going 8-1 so far, not exactly, you know, making an easy trip for themselves over the course of the series, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, and over just the course of this league, they haven't exactly put themselves on the board yet when it comes to this match specifically, which when you're looking to try and, you know, make a little redemption story for yourself, shut down the likes of another Titan to sit, to sit there and prove your worth to be on a throne up in that, you know, top 20 something rankings. Overall, you need to sit there and step up your competition and step up your game to show that, I mean, nobody needs to slow you down because a playoffs come up pretty soon. I mean, this is going to give a lot of those lower tier teams some motivation absolutely and i mean the dominance that we saw from S um, csu black was just amazing to see there was never really a point where they were on the back pedal at all but i do think that can be an advantage for search and destroy right the more a higher octane team the one that likes the fast approach at times sometimes struggles on that kind of slower mode where you have to play off your life yeah i completely agree i mean these guys i mean going forward uh, maybe uh, they weren't exactly slacking in terms of kills. I mean, you had a couple guys who couldn't exactly True. buff anything out. But when it comes to search and destroy, I mean, from what we've seen tonight, that's really what it comes down to is kills. Because, I mean, if you can go ahead and get those eliminations and everything, you don't have to worry about the fact that there's a bomb in front of you. I mean, the bomb's really just there for pressure. It's an objective overall, but it's not a necessity of something like Hardpoint, where if you run around all game, it's not. It's going to break out in a tie. I mean, that's not much of a choice when it comes to search and destroy. So overall, I mean, these guys, if they sit there and play their cards right and, you know, buy, or as we said earlier, into that slower kind of form factor, they could definitely show that they have promise when it comes to Garrison. I mean, which we've already seen tonight. But I mean, it, once again, it, you know, refreshing on what we saw earlier, you can't play it too slow in that case. Otherwise, I mean, it's just you're not going to put any pressure on the opposers. And if your opposers is Long Beach, I mean, that's that's a real toughie right there. Hmm. Garrison, though, we've seen this, like you mentioned, so many times before, but finding the advantage on Garrison of all SD maps can be really tough for either team. From the matchup we saw originally, right, we saw some early aggression coming out from Tulsa, and that worked really well for them, but they decided to kind of adapt in the wrong way. They regressed and played super slow, and they got punished for it all the way until the very end. Are we expecting to see that to happen to Grosmont? I mean... I'm sure hoping I not. Oh, yeah, me I too, mean, but... it's, it's really what I mean. These guys, I'm hoping to sit there and see some back and forth. I mean, well, we've been making calls back and forth all night. I mean, everybody just does it naturally because, I mean, we don't go to these universities, but we, we like the little we like the little gamble on our side. But overall, I mean, we just sit there. I mean, not physically. We're not putting money on this. So, you know, you know, let's not let's shut those allocation or allegations. I'm down already broke. Quick. I don't have any money to bet. 
Yeah, I'm on the same case. But overall, we just have to sit there and hope that these guys give us a good back and forth because when you really break it down, I mean, we guys have to, you know, they have to shut it down. They have to find a way to establish themselves on the point. They need to look at how they can rotate between these points because with Garrison being so large, but yet also so small at the same time, oddly enough. I mean, those rotations are hard enough as it is, but you really have to get those early picks and take as much advantage of it as possible. You know, you're completely right. I think those hot zones are something that's going to be really important going into this one, right? Brick house, you have green, you have the bridge connecting pretty much the entirety of the two sites. All of that needs to work extremely well in Grossmont's favor in order to have an even 1-1 one -one between going into control. Uh, we'll have to see. You know, we said point number one was going to be important on the hard point. I really think the first two rounds of S&D are going to tell us what's going to happen here. Yeah, especially if they sit there and get way too ahead to where it gets to a point where, you know, it doesn't feel like Grossmont's going to come back in any kind of way or neither is Long Beach. I mean, they could really show these teams establishment on a point. But overall, besides that, I mean, you have to sit there and consider what exactly is going on and how they're going to maintain themselves and, you know, figure out how they're going to actually put themselves in this competition to show that even if they're not going to win hard point, I mean, they can sit there and show that they have some promise in other ways to let this series ride out a little bit longer. Cause if it gets to a second search and destroy, I mean, that could be the turning point for them. So they have to look at the long game right now. If you don't win that first point, because you'd have less breathing room to work with. Mm, I, I can't wait to see who's on the offense first. I think that's going to be really interesting. If Grosbot's on the offensive first, I can't wait to see how they want to play this. I think we know how CSU is going to play it, though. Yeah, and I'll completely agree with you. I mean, I feel like it's going to be an exact replay, and it really just comes down to how Grossmont, or Grossmont retaliates because, I mean, I, I feel like we both had the same idea Whoa. of what exactly is about to happen. Okay. Did you see that? Yeah, there's, there's an old ghost. It's okay. a, it's well, a it looks ghost. Like we're in a, all right, so we, we apparently didn't get to see who started on offense, but we can figure that out by seeing who's about to come on defense. Um... But besides that, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, if we're looking at score right here, we're looking at CSULB already having a point on the board. So Grossmont now being on the offensive side, they had to find a way. I I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and make a call to CSULB. I'm going to sit there and say what we probably were both thinking. They're probably aggressive as heck right there in the yeah. front. Made a huge push right down the middle and got the picks they need to do, right? Especially when you win hard point, you win most of those gunfights. You had that confidence going into the search and destroy, saying, you know what? Let's just go guns a blazing. We're going to win it. And then if we get around a defense, we have that round advantage that we can deal with. Things are getting spicy, though. We see Reese RCVZ getting the opening pick, able to take down Fama. We saw them on hard point being able to go super strong, but they're only one and one right now. Wasn't that dominant of an opening, but I'd worry most about Bolt on CSU's side. If he's going to go down, this could be an easy round for Grossman's side, but Bolt's holding down on B almost, exclusive, I think it's almost exclusively with 3 and 0. Oh. You got to watch out, though. A 4v4. Glizlock trying to bring that bomb on the B, trying to make sure it's safe, but everyone could be rotating over, especially damn Zuri, able to find another one. That's beautiful to see, but there's still two more right around the corner. Seeing it, going to try to hide around the corners, not going to go for it instead. This could be a prime position for Grossman to go over to A. Yeah, and I'm bolt. totally with you on that. I mean, I feel like Grossmont had the advantage. They had that first pick. They could have pushed it, and, then, and they could have literally copied C A C S U L B right up there in the front once they got that first pick. But I don't think they capitalized on top of it, giving the likes of damn Zuri to follow <laughs> up and get that pick around the back and give themselves, you know, allow C S U L B to, you know, switch the tire, uh, switch the ties up a little bit and give them the advantage, inevitably giving them an into this round as well. Yeah, I really do feel like that because Grosma kind of stalled themselves out outside of B-Site, they gave too much time for CSU to counter position the ways pretty much wherever they wanted. They realized no one was playing around A, green was seemingly clear, they had to have been near vents, they had to have been near B, there's no other place they could really have gone. So they allowed themselves to kind of really push up, and Zuri especially was able to capitalize on it. Yeah, and I feel like at that point, the shoots of Grossmont, they didn't make a push on that bomb either. They sat there, they established themselves around the point, but they didn't exactly go down for a plant by any means. Therefore, showing that they didn't, it didn't seem like they had much of a game plan to work with. We do see, you know, uh, uh, meanwhile, we see the complete opposite with CSULB. They're rushing in, they're going ahead and getting kills wherever they can, getting these trades in and out, already putting themselves on the bomb within the first 30 seconds. And it, whenever it comes around, they finally get these shutdowns. They can just plant the bomb, play it out easy, and then just, you know, call it a day. 
Oh, Planet was playing so dangerously with that bomb too, trying to push up and find VZ, but instead VZ was able to run away just in time. Both of them able to keep their lives. Well, what about Green? Bolt can try to contest one on the other side of the bridge. Isn't able to find it. Instead, going to rotate around and maybe go on the other side of Green playing the Long Kong game. That bomb still not in the ground. 39 seconds left. It's going to be up to Green, though, of whether or not they're going to stay alive. But all these different bodies are connecting in bullets, but no one's going to go down except for one on Gross's side. Having to see VZ, though. Waiting. Grenades in hand. Bomb going to go into the ground. 40 seconds left. Afro needs to push up. Or is it going to be Glizlock instead? Able to find one? No, it's going to be on the opposite side. Almost a flawless one from CSU. Yeah, this is... This is... This is... And those two rounds you talked about, they're gone. Mm -hmm. They've been gone for a round now, and, and I think it's pretty clear what we're looking at here. I mean, I don't want to go ahead and establish a winner, but I would love to sit there and see see a little see a little strike come in from old Grossmont. Because I mean, overall, we got to sit there and see these guys really come in. We need to sit them. It's, we need to see them succeed somehow. We got it. I mean, you got to actually have some successes to deal with when you're going back and looking at these reviews and looking at your own team perform because i mean compared to how they perform the rest of the season you can't just say all right y'all were you tired what's going on here like you need things to critique you need things to talk about and grossmont has to find those moments those times where they can say this is what i did right this is what i did wrong and if i did this right how can i continue this momentum and overall, it's just looking like the only momentum is looking at CSULB. They got four, no, two four streaks going on, excuse me. I mean, and that could be a lot of streaks coming forward if they can find a way to finish it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a clear, concise answer, really. It's not just like Grossmont needs to get kills for head. I mean, they sure do. I mean, look at that. There's only one left alive. But they stole themselves out right outside the bridge against CSU. They capitalize on that. They surround Grossmont. And there's a reason why they're 4-0. Goodness gracious, man. I just, I don't exactly know what I could say to help Grosmont's case right around this time. I mean, you're letting CSULB beat you in almost every single encounter in this point in the game. You're letting them win these lineups. You're not finding a way to maneuver around the map to get these, you know, edges on top of them to find a way to get those picks from the side, from the back. You know, getting their backs turned towards you. That's, you need to find those distractions. You need to find those wild cards within your team to be able to force those. I mean, and when you're looking at the situation these guys are in, I mean, who exactly can you allocate to do that? Nobody's seeming like they're actually winning these gunfights to go on the solo rampage to open up and give some breathing room for Grossmont right now. Meanwhile, on the other team, we do have 6-0, and who's been on absolute, and not even trying to hide away at it, too. One's already going to fall on Grossmont's side. Everybody else holding a bit of an offensive position than we're used to on the defense here. Kinger especially trying to find Flamma right down below, unable to secure the kill. And that's a big thing for both of these teams, though, is unable to find these opening picks really effectively. Though, far less trades than we saw on side of Hardpoint. Flamma's going to fall, though. That's going to be the bomb down. This is the first time we've seen CSU Black in the backseat position. They're a body down compared to... Graz. Could be a strong possibility here for Graz about to stay in the game. Only one left alive. It's Bolt having that savage streak turns it to seven to one. Graz will find the point. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. We have something to work with now because overall, Grosmont finally found a way. When you see this setup, Kinger has eyes on Jokester right there. Then on top of that, he was going to follow up with that kill even if he got picked right there. There was some form of synergy right there. There was an actual shape to fall between these players and a line that could be drawn between each of them to find a way where they can get those trades. Even if they do go up front, they need to sit there and have a way to trade themselves out. Because when you're on defense, that's the whole kind of point of this. Now, when you're on offense, this is where it becomes a different game. You need to allocate yourselves a little bit differently and find those wild cards, like I said earlier, to give yourself the edge. And this is where I feel like Grossmont has struggled with the most so far. Finding a way to, you know, get the enemy on their toes and find out where you are rather than having you on lockdown over there on that B site and finding a way to just rush it on that point and win those gunfights. Glizlock 2 pushing up a lot farther. Pretty much next to B-Bomb. Doesn't have a lot of trade potential behind them. VZ's going to fall yet again. There is one now behind, but look at Zuri right around the corner to potentially find another one. No, they're going to fall instead. This is looking good for Graz again. It seems like they may have found a viable strategy. It's a 3v3 on both sides. Afro 
holding the top of bridge. Not gonna find anybody there. Little does he know they all push down on B. It's a rampage yet again. Mick, I think your answers have been answered. Look at this here. Afro having to put himself away needs to hold on tight to go for the heal. But there's only one left alive, and it's gonna be Jokester. Seven to four now on a four streak already. Holding on tight. They can't cover all the angles. Able to find Afro though. There's still one left alive. It's both themselves. Oh. This is the first 1v1 we've seen in a while, but where is both to be seen? He has to get the bomb. Jokester now in its possession. 13 seconds left. Has to go for the plan. Definitely not going to be on B. So, uh, definitely not going to be on A. Now Bull has to go for the rotate. He has to know where they are at this point. Bombs underway. Jokester now okay. hiding away, having to reposition himself. But no, he's invisible. And Bo gets no, the play. Oh man. Oh, that was such a great escape. That man could have made out like a bandit. But he sat there right in the open in the eyes of Bolt, who was over there towards their spawn, had way too much place to work with, too much area to look over when he's kind of rotating in those front garage doors to sit there and have a wide open angle on this man. I mean, you see Jokester, is he looking over there on Brick? I mean, obviously you need to choke that man off, but when he's sitting back there towards a side, there you need to find a better position, possibly catwalk, any kind of way to get some cover on you because, I mean, that man was, he was fully exposed in that point. He was like a deer in headlights. So, I mean, overall, when you're in that situation, I mean, that was, that was played up so well until you get to that bomb plant and you just can't sit there and capitalize on it. I mean, even if you got to go Vince, that's, that's at least a better option because you're choking yourself off in terms of vision and allowing, you know, the bomb plant to come down at least. Well, at least with Vince, right? You could uh, reposition yourself going up top. Exactly. But standing next to a tank, not so much. You got to give it though. Both teams have been able to find a lot of effective first bloods here. It's going to be the favor this time around for CSU. That's going to be three bodies left, potentially for search and destroy as a whole. Streaks are coming down now. Never mind now. One body left. Joker finds himself in a bad spot on top of green. That's going to be a very concisive uh, search and destroy. Yeah, it's very, very, very concise, as you said. It, it almost felt surgical to a point because, I mean, it was just so quick. It was so aggressive. It was so precise. It was just absolutely kind of clean on the behalf of CSU LB. These guys came in, they swept these guys up, and it almost felt like at times they didn't know what, it almost put Grosswald in a situation where they didn't know what to do. Um, overall, I mean, you do see these two kind of competing, going back and forth, and Grosswald did get to put on the board overall, but when you're in those situations, you need to sit there and find a way to where you can't let yourself be choked up on control, because at this point in time now, they're going back to raid, as we see up on the top. So, I mean, we see that they haven't exactly succeeded in raid last time. And when you're really looking at it, especially just talking about momentum overall, not just as a player point from perspective, especially talking about Bolt last game and how he sat there and just absolutely demolished, getting those streaks and everything, you need to sit there and look at like momentum in terms of the whole series. These guys are now looking at 2-0, and and you're putting these guys in a situation where Grossmont has to go on a 3-0 streak to even win this right now. There is no compromises whatsoever from this point forward. And when you're looking at the map set and how you've just been performing as a team running it up to this point, it, it's not looking good. So you have to find a way. I mean, possibly just look for some time to talk to each other, figure out in these post games or these pre games and figure out what have these guys been doing? They just been winning gunfights. OK, well, then sit there. Let's turn the tides in our favor. Let's 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 give them one gun against our three that we got. So, you know, find a way to play around that. But it just seems as if they don't have it so far. No, oh, you're completely right. Right on the money there. If I was Grossmont right now, I would be sweating bullets. Typically, yeah. a team that isn't very aggressive loses on a hard point, brings it back in search and destroy. But we also saw that same aggressive team play aggressive on SMD and win in a spectacular fashion. What kind of advantage would you have going into raid the same map you lost hard point on, but for control, which is, for maybe a lack of a better way of saying it, a much more difficult game mode than hard point? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to bust out the little coaching uh, thing oh, going on right here. So what it comes down to is it's usually preached that defense is a lot easier on control. So with that, it really comes down to winning those gunfights, making darn sure you don't give up a defensive round. Because even if you're going to get to that point, if you have to sit there and go absolutely just crazy on offensive round, if you die, if you lose in terms of uh, like, what is it, kills? I mean, that's totally fine, but you need to sit there and find a way to get the momentum and get it shifted in your favor when it comes to those points, because when you're on offense, you have to find a way to put yourself on top, to give yourself that advantage, because once it comes around to it, offense is a lot harder. So you can sit there and take the time. You can utilize your lives compared to the time when it comes to offense.
It's going to be tough. No two ways about it. It's going to be a very tough matchup for Grasmon. But it's not impossible either. They've had two maps to really study how CSU LB Black uh, LB have played, right? Yeah. They know exactly how they like to play. And they like to play aggressively. They play off of each other too, which it makes it difficult. But as long as Grasmon can play off each other as well, maybe play a little bit more defensively at that, I think they can maybe ride out these defensive rounds and maybe just take one aggressive one and win. Yeah, and I'm totally with you. I mean, they had to find a way to, you know, at least just get an advantage in somehow. Like, so far, even if it's in terms of rounds, find a way to get an advantage. These guys have been behind when it comes to rounds, when it comes to games, in this whole series, when it comes to kills. Just in every aspect, it doesn't seem like anybody's found a way to get on top of these CSULB guys. And they have to find just anybody, even if it's just a single player in terms of kills. They need to find a win just anywhere in terms of the series right now because i mean it, when you really look at it they need to sit there and find a way to get it on a round compared to a player because when you break it down i mean if you sit there and get the momentum shifted right off the bat and then find a way to you know be a little more aggressive and allow yourself some breathing room to allow those mistakes i mean you'll be sitting just fine and you'll really open up for yourselves but for right now it seems like there's no room at all for any mistakes otherwise this series is over they're going eight and two, and then it just seems at that point, I mean, I'm not going to say their whole their whole circuit's over, but I mean, that's pretty big in terms of how the rankings are going right now. That could drop you down pretty significantly. The stakes are high right now, Mick. The stakes are so high right now for Grasmont to bring it back right now. It may to some be nothing short of a miracle to bring this back on raid for control to some. People are really hoping that Grosmont can bring it back and see maybe maybe maps four and five. But to others, CSU are doing such a great job right now. They just want to see a clean and concise 3-0 coming out here. It's going to be a done and dirty match. It's going to be a rough tumble between both of these teams. So far, CSU has had a huge advantage and had a great plan going into every single matchup. Grosmont now, small little break. We're getting some things set up here, but the game is starting in two seconds. They have to execute what they've learned. And they have to get it on raid. That's that's the whole kicker, man. We sat there. We've already seen them on this map. We didn't exactly see them step up and find Revenge a way to story. perform on this. So, yeah, that's, that's what they're hoping for right now. <sighs> We're going to have to wait and see how this goes. These first few opening picks are going to be utterly important here. Early grenade comes out from Jokester. Not going to connect with anything. Flamma, though, hiding behind the rock and courtyard. Oh, this opening pick could be huge, but Zuri off screen is able to find a double heal right off the rip. Oh, no, they're melting away on B. They're trying to get B immediately on Grosmont's side. They start off on the offensive here, but also at the same time, they're trying to find some A and B at the, mo at the same exact time. They're trying to divide up the defense here. Oh. Oh, These guys, okay, Lord. finally finding some strides. They're getting, here's a small success like I mentioned. They have a tick on B side, so they can play into this. These guys are finding momentum on A as well. They're doing really good for them being on offense. Usually you don't see this, but they're doing really well. They're allocating themselves good right now. They're really on both sides of the field, really giving these guys a run for their money. Because CSULB, as you see, they're really good at trading. They're very good at playing groups. But when you have two guys on each point, you have to sit there. It's an exact same matchup at that point. There's no, there is no numbers advantage. Otherwise, you're giving up a point. Two so this is exactly beam. where Grosmont could find their advantage and pull this out. Oh, and it looks like B may go underway. There's a minute left in the entire round, but there you go. Just a few seconds short. No one there on the defense is able to take it back. B's in their control. This is such a good lead for Grosmont now. And now they just need two more ticks on A, but the entirety of CSU Black now have a single target to work with. Flamma trying oh. to get those spawn kills early on, has to back off a little bit more, but around the corner, Zuri found another one. But what about the rest of Grosmont? They have to hold on tight. The entire kill feed in the favor of CSU. Grosmont hasn't really found much of a success except for Joker. It's going to be 12 lives remaining. They have to do this quick, but they can't even get close to A. Oh my goodness. They have to be <gasps> making that mid push. No! They, mm, it's just too, it's too unfortunate how they want to sit there and keep on challenging these guys on their spawn. If you know he's over there under garage right there by the car, you need to find a different route to be taking if you're losing these gunfights. Win it as a team or find a way to make maneuver yourself to that middle. Catch the rest of these guys off balance and then find a way to get a flank and clear this room out. 
But it seems as if it's just charging it up front and then finding a way to sit there and just, you know, take it right head on. And it, it worked for B, but A is a completely different site and a completely different story it's looking like. Seemingly out of nowhere. No response remaining. Still trying to get A. They've made no progress. The bodies are melting away all over. CSU seem to have taken it back. There's two left. No one left alive. And Jokester's able to hold on a little bit longer. But they know exactly where he's at. Zuri waiting for the rotates. Trying to find him behind the white band. But you know, he's already rotated out. Jokester might be able to find yet another one. He's cornered. He's trapped. No. CSU get the first round. That was so close for Grusma. It was. There was so much potential right there once they captured that B point. You could sit there and play on the rotations. You, you can go through the flanks. You can try and take control of middle. As long as you have a single man who didn't die in that case, that's going to keep these guys super scared at CSULB to figure out where the actual heck is he? What are we going to do about him? Because we see these other guys, they're locked in and spawn, but if they have a flank, if they have a wild card or an ace up their sleeve anywhere else on the map, Lord knows what he's capable of. And they sat there and they could have taken advantage of the intimidation they had in the front form and found a way to, you know, shift it into their favor in the long term of things. But you just saw them trying to sit there and funnel out of spawn so much and so so consistently, they never got a chance to actually retaliate and get on that A site. Oh, but Glass is on a good start. Well, was on a good start before getting traded out. Zuri's able to get control of A yet again. B, not even being a thought of at the moment here. Look how hotly contested this is between both teams. Grossman's able to have a little bit of an advantage here. They do have some more lives now, even again. But Flamma and company have been unable to reach A site pretty much at all. In fact, the one tick they almost had is now going to be completely going back. Yeah, we see these guys already trying to find a mid advantage right here. Bolt shutting down a couple of these guys, but overall looking pretty good. I mean, Bolt, he's not exactly worried about objectives right now. He's worried about getting right in the middle of everybody's attention, finding ways to get all that attention brought to himself and allowing his teammates to maneuver around the map just completely freely. As we saw, a couple of those guys went to A side, a couple went to B side. I mean, it seems as if CSULB has full reign of the map right now. They definitely have control on B side. I mean, but it also oddly enough doesn't even look like they're too worried about the objective. It almost seems like they're trying to get these kills and put themselves in a position where they don't need to worry about the objective if all of Grossmod's lives are run out. CSU believes that they have the gunfight advantage. Last two maps have proved that's most likely the case, but now they're going to try to go to B. They're trying to juke out Gross as much as they can. Look at this here, trophy system's down. A tick already into B, possibly almost going to half. They have it on both sides now, but if they can get B, this is gonna be huge. 45 seconds left, bodies are falling, Bolt's able to stave it off a little bit longer, but what about the cash window? No, it's gonna be King or still able to stay alive. Holding down multiple different angles. Zuri needs to hurry up. He's surrounded. Bolt needs to hold on. He's able to find one. But what about the other? Zuri's able to come in clutch. They have all of B. They have to do what Grossmont could. And when they got B themselves, only a round to go. Already one tick into A. Still able to find some buy. Jokester's trying to save it off as sure. well. But no. They already are on the site. And you do see right here, these guys are trying to hold down A as possible. Now, issue is when it, you really break it down from, from a site to site basis, B is very open. B has so many kind of access points to it, so many areas for these guys to come in and get an advantage on you from a higher point of view. Now, when it comes down to A site, everything is even Steven right here. These guys, there's so much cover on both sides, so much room to work with. It's such a huge round of cover everywhere. So contesting oh, time no. could go on literally forever. But you have to sit there and manipulate your lives at that point if you're going to go ahead and capture B first. And they only have two left, Mick. One jokester again finds himself the last one alive. Then quick capture comes on through. Is it going to be the life or is it going to be the capture? It's simultaneous. See as you take two. Oh, man. I think. You know what, Keg? I'm going to be honest yeah. with you, man. This ain't looking oh, no. pretty for old Gross right now. I, I mean. I'm just sitting here rattling my brain like what can Gross do to really bring it back because they're playing the trades game really well they're rotating where they find the contestant on both A and B it just seems like wherever they go there's two of CSU and even if they get the trades there's another one there right yeah, around and it's it's just another slack of what we saw earlier a lot of team communication we see these guys doing really well and saying you know we can team up on these sites but when you're looking at moving and maneuvering between sites, and if you sit there and give up those opportunities as well, I mean, you're gonna get picked off and then you're gonna get cut off in your spawn. So there has to be some kind of, there has to be a form and an ideal behind team communication 24 seven when it comes to this control point, because this is the only one you can really get spawn killed in if it comes down to it.
Oh, but we're already starting to see that. Maybe not necessarily on spawn, but the entire feed in the favor of CSU. Gross might one. They haven't been able to take A in the past, but they've been able to take B when they were last on the offensive here. Things are looking really positive for them in the beginning. The only thing is that there's their down lives compared to CSU. But Flamma might have found the gold mine here. So many different buys get traded out, but he's able to find one at the very least. Both, though, in the same situation, might be in a gold mine. Little does he know, one's right down below. Oh, if he can find it, that could be huge. But no, they've already been cleared away. All the all the control that grows my house gone has suddenly gone away but you do see him so they're trying to buff it out over there on that b side because no matter how long it takes it to capture a point as long as you can stay on it every second you're on that point there's a second also being you know pause on the clock we see that it hasn't moved for 52 seconds so far and these guys are still making progress on this site and they have plenty to work with on a as well so if they can find another point where they sit there and put the csu lb on the tip of their toes and not able to, you know, lock down any kills or any players anywhere, they should be in a completely peachy fine position to, you know, allocate themselves, go back and forth and find a, another, or, I'm sorry, not another round, but a single round on the board. Oh, this could be huge. I think you're right. They're going to be going for A and then all they have left is B. Flamma says no, though. I don't want you to do that. But Glizlock might be able to have a proper response. The rockets come down, though. The unexpected factor still is able to go into Grossmont's side. There's one left alive. There's only going to be so much more on B, but there's only 10 lives in the favor of Grossmont. 16 in CSU Black. They might be able to use those five lives to trade off as effectively as they can. All of CSU now focusing on a single target, but the bodies are only now in the single digits for Grossmont. And they win! Yeah. Yes, that was huge right there. Okay, so that that really came down to right there, where it was, I want to say, um, it was between uh, two guys right there on the A side. It was between Bolt and it was between one of those Grossmont players. He slid onto that point. Bolt never sat there and got back on that point on the A side to get the to get the progress down. He let it run out. It was Kinger who sat there and slid onto that point as the last second. I'm talking there was only a like a tiny bit right there, and these guys are finally giving a run for it. They sat there, they shut him down with those kill streaks, but there had to be a man to follow that up. And thankfully, Kinger was there to follow it up. He got on that side, he got that last second, buying them enough time to go on that B side. And meanwhile, you have Bolt over there still trying to hold it down, thinking that it wasn't going to go in their favor. But he did not reverse any progress, allowing that easy little slide in and allowing the open space for these guys on B side. And it can be said for Raid 2, going on the offense is a lot more difficult at times than being on the defense, and Grosswatt was able to take the tougher challenge. CSU, though, they have to go back on the offensive themselves for what could be the very last round of the series. They have some on B, others have fallen, those who are trying to rotate, trying to deny rotates too, but damn, Zuri's able to stay alive a little bit longer, turning himself into a turret, though Kinger's able to find two, clearing out b side almost effectively as anything else, but what about the rest of CSU? They're all clamoring forwards, there's a single tick oh. on B, but what about A? It's untouched. Yeah, and I'm sure these guys, you know, it's actually contested right now, we got a lot of guys, or, I'm sorry, no it's not, these guys are, I see the exclamation point up top, I and know, they kind of got too. Yeah, but uh, overall, you know, we do see these guys completely <gasps> oh, oriented, no. but now we do see actually Zuri trying to make a move on it while we have two Grossmont players trying to get there on top of it as well. Completely shutting down that idea of going A by any means. With this being the only objective left at this point, Grossmont has to hold this down to tie up this game because, I mean, it's fully capable of them at this point. They do need to be watching those spawns as they do have, you know, Afro and uh, Bolt back there. And they're two, two huge kind of guys, but... Glizok and Klinger are there to shut that down, not allow themselves to be locked in those spawns, and they have free reign on A site now to actually hold things out. The Turquoise Warriors able to have the life advantage right now, finding some of the opening spawn peaks, though. A bit of a response from Afro, finding a double kill, but what about the rest? Trying to even things out could be the primary objective, and they're coming so close, only having 15 to 4, 13, excuse me. But what about this, though? CSU aren't able to get on A. Jokesters holding down the entirety of the northern front, making sure nobody can come even close. And look how fragmented everyone on CSU is. Flamma apparently going to be trying to go for a bit of a flank here. VC trying to deny as much as he can in chokeholds, and it's working out so well. CSU, 10 lives remaining, need to think of a new strategy if they want to win the series here. Yeah, these guys need to be locking down this in the back over here because we see Flemma making a flank over towards Longer right now. And overall, that can be huge for these guys because now Jokester's in a situation where he has to be in a 1v2 situation oh. and that's unlikely to be in his favor. And it the seems as if at this point, 
Grossma could be possibly locked in spawns once again if they let this kind of continue, but they're doing a great job of maneuvering around and not letting them, they're letting them get time on the objective right now and possibly ending it right here. What? No way. They just oh, took it back goodness. with a simple flake. That was all Flamma. I, I, I got to appreciate the fact that they wanted to take the long route and get those flanks in, but buddy, when you have three guys on that objective, you don't have enough time to go for flanks. They're going to capture that point a little bit too quick. It's not going to matter at that point. And these guys were trying something slick, and it, it would have worked in their favor because I, obviously you had Afro and Bolt back there in the spawns, and those are two threats you don't exactly want to mess with. But when you're in the situation of it comes down to it, these guys are spread out in terms of flanking and all, all around the map on the other side, which would have been great if you're on a defensive setup where the guys are locked in their spawn. But if you got three guys on the objective, I think I think your priorities should lie somewhere else. Yeah, it was very unfortunate to see. Gross had such a great potential to make it back on the offensive. They got the harder position, but the defense fell short every time on control. And it looks like that 9-0 turns into a 10-0 here for CSU LB Black tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can only hope because I love seeing good games. I love seeing even matchups. I love seeing it all around, but it just feels like the 8-1 to 9-0. and 0, I mean, it just didn't feel as close as we were hoping it to be. True. Because, I mean, overall, I mean, Long Beach just came in here with a force. They were very upfront about everything they were intending to do. I even thought in that last round, because they had a life advantage or a life disadvantage, they were going to say, all right, let's play it a little bit slower here, you know, take some time to slow down. But, I mean, they were already stuck in sixth gear at that point, point. they had no intentions of slowing down at that point. They felt like they could buff out these kills. They felt like they could do so much. And I'm sure, I mean, I had the same mentality as Grossmont. They're probably going to stay back and spawn and play things a little slow with how much little lives they had comparatively. But once you sit there and get those flanks in, once you had those quick kills right before your team floods onto A site, I mean, at that point, Grossmont, they had the wrong idea. They couldn't sit there and get on point quick enough to actually lock it down and, you know, find a way to turn this all around. So it's unfortunate, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And it's plenty of film to go over with this next week when you say, once again, they do all this practice, practice, and practice. And we'll have to see how it all goes down next week. 10-0 and 0 in the favor of CSU. Unfortunately, it's going to be 8-2 and 2 now for Grossmont. We'll get to wait and see what the CCL has entailed for all of us here on the Bravo and Alpha streams. My name has been Cake. And, Mick, it's been amazing to work with you again, man. But can't wait to see what happens next week i'm in the same shoes as you man i'm i'm looking <laughs> excited i'm looking forward to it and as you know playoffs come here up pretty soon it's looking like now with you know just this month left and then we're right into it i mean it's gonna be one hell of a show coming up absolutely but until then we'll see you guys all next or i'm sorry no is today monday it is monday it wow indeed. tomorrow we'll see you guys all tomorrow and have a wonderful night